church and our online family and friends. We thank you so much for joining us on tonight for Bible study. Our scripture comes from Romans 5 and 8. And it says, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Romans 5 and 8 says again, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. That's why this song has come into my mind. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. Amen.
that your word, Father God, would be a blessing for others to hear. That lives will be made to bear. Old habits will be thrown away. Old burdens will be rolled away. That we will honor you and glorify your name. We thank you for your word today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7. We'll begin at verse number 7, Matthew chapter 7. We'll continue our path on prayer and fasting, right? And this week, we'll end our corporate fasting time together as we pray and fast for the things that we want to get to know God more dearer. We want to make sure that we walk closer with him. And we want God to be the one who blesses us as we continue to go along this pathway. Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse number 7, stopping at verse number 11. Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse number 7, stopping, stopping at verse number 11. Amen. Amen. We've been looking at Matthew chapter 6, and Matthew chapter 6 remind us for what we have covered so far. Anybody? Anybody who are note takers and, and still have it on their mind? Anyone? Matthew chapter 6. Tell me something about Matthew chapter 6. Yes, ma'am. Matthew chapter 6 teaches how to pray, how to fast, how to give to the needy. Okay. How to pray, how to fast, how to give to the needy. Anybody else? Anything else? So what does, what does Matthew chapter 6 tell us about praying and fasting? What does it tell us? Whatever you do, don't be like the hypocrites. Don't be like the hypocrites. Heard, so whatever you do, do it in private. So whatever you do in private, God will reward you openly. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you pray, you ought to go in secret. And God who, who hears in secret, he rewards you openly. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Anything else? What did he say about when you give gifts to people? When you give alms, King James says, when you give alms, when you give gifts. Don't let you, don't, don't let, don't let, well, we got one student in the house tonight. <laughs> we have one student, one participant tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're just glad to have young adults participate. Amen. So uh, when we, when we, when we give alms, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. What is that talking don't tell the world what you did. Don't tell people what you have done, right? So what you do for people ought not be for everybody to know. You ought to do it out of the right motive and the right heart, right? right. What does he say, as Sister alluded to, what did he say about your loud praying and your, your repetitionless prayer? He said, don't be like the hypocrite. Don't be like those who are fake. Uh-huh, so God knows our needs before he even asks. And he says, whatever you do, go into your closet. And after you've gone into your closet, you shut the door. So prayer is personal and prayer is private. And let me tell you this, not only is it personal, not only is it private, it is powerful. Prayer is powerful. That's right. So prayer is personal, prayer is powerful. God moves as we pray. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. How powerful is prayer? 
when we talk about this prayer that Jesus lays out, and we discovered that it's not the Lord's prayer, for the Lord's prayer is found where? John 15. You're almost there. John 17, right? John 17, we have what is known as the Lord's Prayer. And, and when, he, when he prays, he says, Lord, I have, I have brought these to you, and Lord, I want you to keep them. It's the Lord's Prayer, John 17, right? Does it begin before 17? Anybody? He sets them up in John 16. He sets them up, he says, the world will offer you tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. Then he goes into John 17. He's praying for the saints. He's praying, God, I have given them to you. God, they will walk with you. God, bless them. The Lord's prayer. Yes? So what, if that's the Lord's prayer in John 17, what do we see in Matthew 6? The model prayer, right? Why do we know it as the model prayer? Because we have to pray like this. We pray like this. The disciple says, Lord, teach us to pray. And he says, when you pray, you pray like this. King James says, when you pray, you pray in this manner. You pray like this. How is he telling us to pray? When he says he prayed, this is Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse number 9. He says, when you pray, you pray like this. What is the first thing he says? He says, when you pray, pray our Father. We acknowledge God as our Father. What is he saying there? Even though prayer is personal, even though it is a personal prayer, you acknowledge that God the Father is the Father, but not just you, for other people, other believers. He says, our Father. Well, the next thing he says, John chapter 6, verse number 9, he says, when you pray, you pray like this, and then he says, our Father. What does he say? Hallowed to thy name. What is he talking about? Hallowed to you. I told you last week that a fellow said, I know God's, God's name. He said, God's first name is Howard. Little boy said, God's first name is Howard. So how you know his first name is Howard? Because the Bible says, Howard be your name. What he was really saying is, Howard be your name. When we say Howard to your name, we're telling God your name is holy. Uh, your name is to be glorified. Your name is to be honored. Howard to your name. Lord, we magnify with you. We glorify you. Lord, we love you. We adore you. So the first part of this prayer is the ad adoration. Adoration of God. We adore God. We praise him not just because of what he's done. We praise him for who he is. Yes? What's the next thing Jesus says in his model prayer? Your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Every kingdom has a king. And if we're asking God to bring his kingdom to earth, then we, want, we acknowledge that God is the king. Every kingdom has a king. Who's king in your life? That's the right answer. So if, if we want God's kingdom to come, we want God to rule on planet earth. As he rules in heaven. What's the next thing he says? Thy will be done. Let your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Right? So if your will is going to be done on earth as it is in heaven God. Then my will is negated by your will. But it also says that our will ought to add up to God's will. It ought to match up to God's will. Our will ought to run parallel to God's will. Yes? So our will ought to run with God's will. So when we pray, we glorify him. When we pray, we want him to rule over our lives. When we pray, we want his will to supersede our will. James says, when you pray, you pray amiss. It means you pray with not the wrong motives. 
So when you pray with a God-type will, with a God-type motive, God answers. And his answer is yes. We're going to talk about that tonight. So we need to make sure that we pray what is God's will. How many of you all have been praying for something and don't have it yet? Anybody? Yeah. So what do you do when you pray and you don't get it? Now stop praying God kill him, okay? Don't, don't pray that prayer. Again, after tonight, stop praying that prayer. <laughs> God kill him off. It's okay. Just, just let God do it his way. So we want to pray God's will. And God's will and God's desire is that all men will come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. When I say men, men, women, boys, and girls. All should come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's our prayer. We, we want our enemies to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. What else did he say when you pray? Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Why did he say give us this day our daily bread? That's all we can have is just today. So we want to pray just for today, right? We want to pray God bless us through this day. When you go to the hospital and the doctor says, you want to make sure this person make it through the night? Mm -hmm. You want God's grace for that day. Mm -hmm. You want God to bless for that day. It, not, it ought not be just when we're sick. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's daily bread every day. Mm -hmm. And it's daily bread day by day. Because the God we serve, guess what? He's able to bless us yesterday, today, and forevermore. So we pray for today. We ask God, give us our daily bread. You remember when the Israelites were running in the wilderness, God gave them manna from above, they ate it, and then they had some people there that act like church folk act these days. What is that? <laughs> they tried to take a plate off. They tried to take a plate off. What, what happened when, when they tried to take a plate off? It's fall. It's fall. Disease. <laughs> Pestilence. Flies, maggots, rockets. I wish I could pray that prayer now. Lord, if anybody take any food away from me, before they get to their car, make it rot on the way. But see, God is a, is a, is a sovereign God. He knows how to do it, and he does it the way he chooses to do it. So give us this day our daily prayer. What's the next thing Jesus said when you pray you ought to do? Forgive us. We all, how many of you want God to forgive you? We all want God to forgive us, right? So we want God to forgive us, but guess what? We have to forgive others. Because that's what you're praying, right? What are you praying? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Well, why is it that we want that person to drop dead and we don't forgive them, but we want God to forgive us. Isn't that something? So we ought to be praying for our enemies. Jesus said, pray for them. Bless them. He said, bless them that messes over you. Bless them that mess over you. What else does Jesus say in this prayer? Don't lead us into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. If anybody's going to keep us out of temptation, it's got to be God. Amen. Songwriter said, deliver me from me. Deliver me from myself. If you're going to be honest, you got some things in your life that you need to be delivered from. And guess what? Not only are there things in your life that you need to be delivered from, there are some things in your life that you're putting on the table that God needs to deliver you from yourself. You believe that? God, that's the part where God, your will be done. Deliver me from me. Lord, I'm messed up. God, deliver me from me. Deliver me from myself. What else did Jesus say when you pray? You pray like this. Keep us from the evil one. Keep us from the evil one. Lead us not into testing, but some people say deliver us from evil. Other versions say keep us from the evil one. So when God, when we pray, we understand that the God we serve is an awesome God. He's an almighty God. He's a sovereign God. He is the amazing God. 
And he's the only one that can keep us from the evil one. You see, the devil is mighty. But only God is almighty. Only God is almighty. And so we want God to keep us from evil and God to keep us from the evil one. Why do men love darkness? So they can hide. So they can hide. Why do men love darkness? They love darkness because their deeds are evil. They love darkness. Why do you keep it lit up around your house, lit up in your apartment complex? And guess what? We got rascals these days that do it in the broad open daylight. Eight o'clock, eight thirty in the morning, a man walks up with the neighbor outside, jacks a man's car up, cut his his uh, catalytic converter off, put it in his car, and drive off. And he see a ring doorbell there. He see the neighbor walking in the yard. The neighbor didn't know what was going on. The, the neighbor is walking in the yard at 8.30 in the morning. He came and took two minutes and got that catalytic converter and gone. Jacked the car up and let it, it back down, took his jack and left. Men love darkness because if God said they because their deeds were evil. Let me tell you, Joseph was doing it in the brought them daylight now. Daylight. I mean, they don't need darkness. They do it in broad open daylight. They don't even they don't even consider the darkness. What else did Jesus say when you pray? He says when you pray, right? Then he goes into his explanation of why you're praying like this, right? He talks about the fact that God hears in secret. God rewards you openly. He talks about the fact that God is such an awesome, amazing God until he can do it when no one else can. He says in verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. You believe that? In Portuguese, God first means God in first place. We have to keep God in first place. God has a place, and he ought to have a place in our lives daily, regardless of what, whether we're walking uprightly or not. If we keep God in first place, we have no choice but to walk upright. Even if we think wrong, we got, we, when we have God in first place, we will walk upright. So we got to keep God in first place. It comes to chapter 7. And in chapter 7, he talks about don't give the pearls to the swine. <laughs> talks about whatever you do there, you need to understand that some people won't appreciate Godliness. He moves to verse number 7. In verse number 7, he says, ask, this is Matthew 7, mm -hmm. verse 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. He says, ask. And then he says, if you ask, it will be given. He says, seek. And when you seek, you will find. He says, knock. And when you knock, the door will be open. Pretty bold statement Jesus makes, doesn't it? Because all of us in this room know it's not just that simple. <laughs> Y'all agree? Because if it was just that simple, then we would all have no want. We quote Psalm 23 all the time. It's, it's most of our favorite psalm, right? Yeah. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then here Jesus comes in the New Testament says, just ask. This word ask in the original form is mean to call, to call to God, to, to call upon God. Jeremiah says, call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Call on God. So he says, ask and it shall be given. Now are you going to trust what Jesus says? Yes. Why? If you've been praying all this time. And it hadn't happened yet. Why are you going to trust what Jesus said? It happens in his time. 
Okay? When we're going through and we're crying through and we're moaning and groaning through, do we understand that it's going to happen in Jesus' time then? Yes. Y'all, boy, y'all sure are spiritual. But is there ever a moment in your life where you need God to show up right now and he didn't do it? Right now. Yeah. Yeah. Deliver me right now, Lord. Yeah. We pray in that prayer that David prayed, God, deliver me speedily. Deliver me right away. Deliver me with speed. God, make haste. Jesus says, ask. And he says, when you ask, it will be given. Am I the only person in this room struggling with this? Am I the only person listening struggling with this? No. Jesus says, just ask. But you have to be patient and wait on the Lord. Come on, minister to me, somebody. <laughs> Teach me what I'm missing here. been at least two and sometimes 200 theories on this particular mm -hmm. verse, right? Yeah, keep there are theories on prayer and there are theories, uh, are different theories on prayer, right? Some people say, take it to the altar and leave it there. Okay. Others, and what they're saying is, go ahead and pray about it one time and don't pick it up again. It's not easy. There are other people who say, you better keep on asking until you get it. What do you say? Keep on asking. Keep on asking. Have you ever kept asking? Yes. Still asking. Why? Why? Why do you keep asking? Because it's God's will. Are you calling in remembrance of what His word says? His word cannot lie to you. Mm -hmm. Sister Henry said, "Be persistent." Mm -hmm. That's a big word. What does persistent mean? <laughs> to continue. Keep on going. Keep doing it. Be persistent. Be, yes. Keep asking. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus says, "Ask, and it shall be given." Remember the parable of the woman that kept knocking. Oh, yeah. I mean, this woman said, let me, he finally, he said, let me give this woman what, I, what she wants. And she's going to worry the heck out of me. So, so we have to be persistent. And not only do we have to be persistent, we have to be consistent. Persistent is a heart thing. It means in a, a heart, H-E-A-R-T. It's a heart thing. It's like, God, I'm going to keep knocking, I'm going to keep asking, I'm going to keep seeking until you bless me. I feel that uh, sometimes I, just my thought, I keep asking. Step two says have faith in you asking. Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, sorry, sir. I'm trying to turn it down. And he's already given me to it. I'm just too blind to see it. Okay, so, so sometimes... You're all right, though. You asked God very specifically, didn't you? You said, God, bless me to be all right. God answered your prayer. You're all right. You have to be specific in your prayers, right? So Jesus says, ask and it shall be given to you. Then he says, seek and you will find. Not only does he say seek and find, he says, knock and the door will be open. Now, re realize now, this is just not physical stuff. This is the spiritual. This particular passage is in parallel with wisdom that we find in Proverbs. The Bible says that wisdom cries in the street. Wisdom is looking for man to accept her. Wisdom is, is being, being wise, for lack of a better word. Wisdom is making the right decision. My, if young folk would pray for wisdom. Boy, if I had known this scripture then, I, would have, I wouldn't have gone through all that I went through. My life would have been so much better off had I dealt with wisdom. The problem is, 
we have too many young people and too many old people that's not walking in wisdom. Jesus says, if you lack wisdom, ask for it. If you lack wisdom, seek it. If you lack wisdom, knock for it. Pray for it. There are three ways to get wisdom. I'm coming to you. There are three ways to get wisdom. Number one, you ask God who gives wisdom freely with liberation. Ask God for wisdom. He will give you wisdom. The second thing is, read the book of Proverbs every day. There is a book, there's a chapter in Proverbs for 30, 31 chapters. You can read it every month over and over again. And when you get to February and other months that don't have 31 days, you double up the last two days or three days. My, 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 if young people would just use wisdom. We can tell them to use wisdom, but they don't have any. God gave them a measurement of faith, but it didn't look like he didn't give us a measurement of wisdom. But the Bible said wisdom is crying in the street, running behind us, trying to track us down. Jesus says, ask for it. So the first thing is to ask God for wisdom. The second thing is to read Proverbs daily. It, got a, it, got, it has a daily dose of wisdom. And the third way to get wisdom is to sit down with wise people. Sit down with people who have wisdom. How do you know they have wisdom? Because of the way they govern their lives. You see their fruit. So Jesus says, ask. Now when you look at this word, ask, and these words, ask, and seek, and knock it. It takes on the parallel of consistently, persistently asking. Consistently, persistently seeking. Consistently, persistently knocking. Jacob said, I'm not going to turn you loose until you bless me. I'm telling you, God, if, if you're going to stay up all night, I'm going to stay up all night. <laughs> and the God we serve stays up all night. God, if I want it bad enough, I will fast for it. God, if I want it bad enough, I will consistently ask for it. And when I consistently ask for it, I'm going to ask for it over and over and over again. Prime example. How many of you Ask God to bless you. How many of you ask God to bless you every day? You constantly ask him. Even when you don't name the blessing you want, you constantly ask him. But let me tell you, during this prayer time, during this, fit, this fasting time, you need to persistently ask. You need to supplicate. You need to ask from the deep depths of your bowels. Ask him. God, I'm confused. God, help me. Speak to me. God, I need direction. God, give me direction. God, I need hope to hold on. God, give me hope. God, I need faith in you. God, give me faith. God asking, God seeking, and God knocking. So what I'm saying to you is, you ought to be asking God. You ought to be seeking God, and you ought to be knocking for God. Remember, he closes out Matthew chapter 6 by talking about, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in verse 33. He closed out in verse 34. Bam, he goes into Matthew chapter 7. He's still in the Sermon on the Mount. It's just one continual message. He teaches them how to pray in the first part of Matthew chapter 6. In Matthew chapter 5, he talks about how to be. Because he gives them the be attitudes. So he tells them how to be. And he makes promises in there. Bless those who mourn. He bless those who are peacemakers. These are the be attitudes. 
Goes in chapter 6 talking about prayer. Now he comes to chapter 7 and showing you how to do it. It's all one continual sermon. It says, ask, seek, knock. In other words, you'll be blessed. Let's look at verse number 7. Verse number 8. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Jesus makes some bold promises. He makes bold promises. But guess what? We have to be diligent. Many Christians, many Christians, many believers cannot be persistent or consistent enough to keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. What they do is they go and get something else to go with it. God, you're taking too long. That's what you're really saying. Since God is not going to do it, I'm going to help God out. Since God's taking so long, I'm going to help God do it. Give me an example in the Old Testament when that happened. Since the circumstances are not lining up right, who did it? Abraham. Abraham himself. It originated with Abraham or Sarah. Which one originated? Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, Sarah said... You said God has promised you a child. And this child will be the one who helps spread godliness all over the world. Now, I got a handmaid. I got a helper. You go into her because she's a young filly. So, Sarah decides and Abraham agrees to go ahead and help God out. The, the message to us is God doesn't need any help. We just are supposed to pray. We just are supposed to ask. We just are supposed to make sure that we seek and we knock. He says, for everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Then he draws an analogy. Or what man is there among you who if his son asks for bread will, he, will give him a stone? What he's saying is parents who have good sense. Parents who are operating with all their faculties. Because we can answer the question, can't we? We can say that there's some folk that really ain't gonna, that not going to treat their children right. So he says, which parents, which man, which woman, which person, which adult, if your child asks you for bread, you're going to give them stone. Let me tell you something. Children are so blessed with the parents they have these days. I know there are some that are being abused. I know there are some that are being neglected. But for the, for the most part, children have parents that are such a blessing blessings to them and they don't even know because they don't know what their parents go through to make it happen all they see is baking egg grits pork beef salami all they see is chicken and whatever else they want ice cream cookies they don't know what happens, what goes into it, what, go, what they have to go through to get there. So, so Jesus asked the question, what person in their good mind, what parent that's on the right track, what parent that really loves the Lord, what parent will give a child a stone when you ask for bread? Next question. Who will, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? You ask for a fish, and your dad and mama give you a snake. What 
hand in their right mind. Jesus is on to something here. He's trying to make a point. He's trying to make sure that we understand all we have to do is ask God. All we have to do is ask God. Watch what God does when we ask. Because he's a good parent, isn't he? He's a really good parent. And check this out. The God that we serve, the parent that we have and the God we serve, most of the stuff, I dare say 99.9999% of the stuff that we receive from him, we don't even have to ask for. Am I right? Did you ask God to let you breathe this morning? You just woke up and God just put it there. Did you ask God to let your heart pump blood to every extremity of your body this morning? Did you ask God to, to make your legs move, your hands, your fingers, your toes? Let me tell you something. You may not even think about your toes. But you walk through the house in the dark and stump your baby toe. That joker will bother you the rest of the year. That little bitty one, that, that one that you don't think you need for anything. But God keeps us and he heals us. It always has amazed me when, when I and others break our toe, it just mends itself back together. We go to the doctor, give him hundred fifty dollars. He said, "Wrap it." He wrap it up with some five dollar doll and send you back to the house <laughs> and charge you hundred fifty dollars for emergency visit. Am I lying to y'all? No. God is the one who keeps us. So, so Jesus asked the question: If you ask God for a fish, would He give you a serpent? What parent? The, the, the question nowadays: Who does that? And what did you ask? Who does that? Or if you ask for a fish, he'll give you a servant. If you then, being evil, now he's talking to those that are not with God. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father, your heavenly father, who is in heaven. Your heavenly father give good things to those who ask. If you, not being almighty God, if you, who is of this world, if you who are carnal, if you who are in the flesh, Give good things to your children. And then G Jesus says, you evil one will give good things to your children. How much more will our heavenly father, who is good, who is the originator of every good and perfect gift, how much more will your heavenly father give unto you? And you right here messing with zeros and God trying to give you a hero. Amen goes right there. Amen. You got to remove yourself from the zero in order for God to give you a hero. It just walked around here. You stuck. Get out of your. Who was the Diddy that says, I'm just feeling myself? Is it Diddy? What people jump all out the car and start dancing to the video and all that kind of carrying on? Get out of your, your emotions. Get out of yourself. Let yourself go. Get out of it and trust God. God has the best, best gifts for us. Jesus says ask. Jesus says seek. Jesus says knock. That's where faith comes in. If you get tired of knocking, seeking, and asking, oh, you little faith. I mean, you ought to get to the point where, where, you, where, where God says, it is. Says Michael, Gabriel, all the rest of you angels, get on down there. And that's what we ought to be about. As a corporate body and as individuals, we ought to bombard heaven. 
We are the one body. Every time heaven's door is, is shut to us, we ought to bust the door down with prayer. Bombard heaven. I mean, we ought to have a battered ram named prayer. It's our weapon. We, we have the word of God for our weapon, and, and prayer makes it happen. We ought to boom, boom, boom. And the way we do it, we say, Lord, here I come again in the name of Jesus, your precious son that died on Calvary. Jesus himself. Lord, I'm coming in the name of Jesus. The one whose name is above every name. In the name of Jesus. I'm bombarding him. Every time we think somebody closed the door in our face. Lord, it's in the name of Jesus. I come now. And then when God shuts the door, don't you go kick it open. Come to the conclusion, Lord, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you got something better for me. You got something better for me and somebody better for me. And Lord, I repent for trying to hold on to what you don't want me to have. Amen. Ooh, good God Almighty. I think I'm feeling myself. <laughs> I'm telling you, stop feeling yourself and getting caught up in emotions. Just ask God. Just seek God. And just not for God. And Jesus says that door will be open. Isn't that something? That's right. But we get tired of not. God, how long are you going to let me go through this? I mean, we throw a pity party in a minute. We will throw a pity party. You need to tell your friends, I ain't coming to the party. Trust God. Stop, stop tripping. Trust God. Trust God. We must persevere. We must be diligent. If we're going to be, if we're going to accomplish anything in this life, you will have to work for it. In the spiritual realm, the word of God in prayer and fasting is when you work for it. There are some people who, this is the first time they've ever really fasted at this level before. And you get to eat every day. I mean, you get to eat every day. Let me tell you, there was a time that we fast from nothing. I mean, fast from everything. So we ate nothing. About the fourth day, the toothpaste began to taste good. <laughs> About the fourth day, I'm telling you, the toothpaste began to, Woo! good God Almighty, thank God for the toothpaste. I got something in my mouth. Thank God for the toothpaste. I mean, when you're fasting and you're not taking in anything, let me tell you something. The water you rinse the toothpaste out of your mouth, you drink the whole bottle to rinse your mouth out this time. You let the water run an extra long period of time. But God answers. The disciples couldn't hear the boy. Matthew chapter 17. They came down off the mountain. They had been up there with Jesus. And, and Jesus transfigured himself. His, his clothes and his face shined like never before. Peter spoke up and said, Ooh, God, it's just good for us to be here. We see Elijah here. We see Moses here. We see Jesus here. I tell you what, let, let me put together a tent for each one of you. We'll, we'll have a church for Jesus, a church for Elijah, a church for Moses. God speaks from heaven and says, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. I mean, they shouldn't have had some church on, on that mountaintop. And Elijah and Moses disappears. They had to look to Jesus and Jesus alone. They come down off the mountain. And when they get down off the mountain, they see this boy who's throwing himself in the fire. He's suffering from a dumb spirit. The man says, I took my boy to your disciples, and they couldn't help him. They couldn't heal him. Jesus heals the boy. The disciples want to know in private, why couldn't we heal? Jesus says, this kind comes but by prayer and fasting. Do you have some this kinds in your life? You got some kinds in your life that will only come through prayer and fasting? 
There's some kind. I'm telling you, there are some kinds in my life that I take to God in prayer in the midst of fasting. Because there are some this kinds. And Jesus said this kind comes only through prayer and fasting. See, the disciples were eating. Jesus was fasting. The disciples were talking. Jesus was praying. This kind come only through prayer. Prayer and fasting. Questions or comments? Man cannot ask anything higher than the level of God. Man cannot ask anything higher than God. Regardless of what you have or what you will get, the devil may give it to you, but if you're going to have the greatest of all, it's going to have to come from God. Stop helping God. Just pray. Stop telling God what to do. Just ask. Stop telling God what you got to have. Because I've learned people, people will pay for what they want and beg for what they need. I think I said that again. People will pay for what they want and beg for what they need. I think I said that one more time. People will pay for what they want and they beg for what they need. People will buy all this stuff that they want and then when they need their medication they come to you because you know they got to have that. <laughs> People will buy all this other stuff and then when they have to have food they come beg you for it because you know you, you can't let them go home. But when you look at what should have been a budget when you look at their cash out when you look Look at their Zale. When you look, some people still have checkbook. When you look at their checkbook, it when you look at their debit card, when you look at their credit card, it went all on what they wanted and not what they needed. So we 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 expense what we want and we beg for what we need. But God promises if we put him first. We will have no want. We will have no need. David says, the Lord is my shepherd. And since the Lord is my shepherd, I don't have anything that I want. He's my shepherd. He's the same God in the midst of confusion as he is in the midst of joy. Take it to God in prayer. I, I, don't, I don't... I don't subscribe to this, this thought that take it to the altar and leave it there. I'm going to the altar every day. See, because I can't wait for Sunday to come before the altar. That's right. <laughs> I got to go to my secret closet every day. Brother Miles, I got I to gotta go before God every day. Now, Lord, I came here yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm back today. Yeah, I am and Lord, I don't have any different prayer than I had yesterday. <laughs> The story is told about a young man who wanted a job. And at this time, you didn't go on the internet to get a job. You showed up on, on Monday morning at 7.30 in the morning, not 8 o'clock, not 10 o'clock. They showed up at 7.30 in the morning, and they wanted a job. This young man wanted a job. They ran him out of there. He came back the next day and acted like it was his first time. Showed up and asked, him, do you have any job? They, Boy, I told you yesterday. I didn't have any job for you. What make you think if I don't have one Monday, I got one Tuesday? Yes, sir. Thank you for listening. He showed back up Wednesday morning. Before the boss walked in the door, 730. Do you have any job for better? What? I'm sick and tired. You come on in here. I'll find something for you to do. He goes in. They, they put him behind a broom and a mop. He swept the place and he mopped the place and he did it with such pride. It was a DJ booth, DJ playing music, and he was drinking on the job. <laughs> Let's say his name was Sam. The boy that got the job name was Les. 
And let's say, drink, Sam, drink. <laughs> drink up, Sam. Drink up, Sam. Drink, drink, Sam, drink. Sam was so drunk he couldn't finish out the night shift. The boss calls and says, Les, let me tell you something. Sam ain't going to be able to make it. He said, I know. <laughs> he said, he's not going to be able to make it through the night. Now, what I need you to do is just play one record after the other. Don't you say anything. Don't get on the air. Don't say it. Don't, don't you mama a mumbling word. Just play one record after the other till in the morning when the day shift comes in. Say, yes, sir. Les Brown said he got off, got off the phone with the boss, called his mama, his girlfriend, and all his buddies, and said, I'm getting ready to come on there. <laughs> <laughs> Sam was sloppy drunk. Les Brown keys up the mic and said, here's, here's your DJ for the night, Les Brown. <laughs> and he put all his little things in there and all his little statements. And from that moment on, he became the DJ. Mm -hmm. What you have to understand is when you're at the right place, at the right time God placed you there, you have to be willing to accept the blessings that God gives you. You just got to keep asking, keep seeking, and keep knocking. The problem is we ask for the wrong things with the wrong motives. James said we ask amiss. We have the wrong motives. We have the wrong ideas. We have the wrong reasons. And then God doesn't answer that. He answers, but he says no. And God is protecting us from destroying ourselves because he's the all-wise God. You know that, right? So if, if you're going to call on God, you got to be persistent. you got to be consistent. you got to walk with him and stay with him. Because every time we sin, guess what happens? We, we break the fellowship with God. Now we move ourselves farther and farther and farther and farther away from God. So every time we fall in sin, get caught in sin, mess up in sin, we break the fellowship and our blessings become farther and farther away because our blessings are tied directly to God. When we're obedient to God, God can bless us. When we're not obedient to God, God can't bless us. God said, love your enemies. Bless those that curse you. Forgive those that despitefully use you. Walk with those people who, who ignore you. Be a blessing to them. Honestly, pray for them. Thank God, I can't do that. Okay, your blessing just move. Isn't that something? We move in our blessing. That's why it's imperative for us to forgive other people so we can get out of prison ourselves. Because when you're not forgiving toward people, you think you got them in prison? What has happened is you block yourself down. And that person is all about their business, doing something else, and making waves and for everything else. So Everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. Everyone who knocks, the door is open to you. But you got to be born again. You got to know Jesus as your Savior. The door of the church is open, the invitation is extended. You need to know Jesus. And Jesus alone. He is the Savior of the world. He's the one who died for us, who was buried for us, who rose for us. The door of the church is open. Will you come to Him? Will you trust Him? Will you believe Him? The door is open. You need to be saved. You need to be born again. You need to trust Jesus as your Savior. Jesus died on Calvary. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. If you can just believe this story, you can be saved right here, right now. Just trust Jesus. You never received him, just bow your head with me and repeat this simple prayer and invite Jesus into your life. Say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. 
Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe that you're now born again. We believe that you're going to heaven when you die. And as we continue in prayer, we need to know that we can repent to the Almighty God. And will you join me in prayer if you struggle with sin just like I do? If life is not what God would have it to be in your life, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for us. Lord God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord, for who you are and for what you do. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us. Now we repent of our sins. We come for rededication. We come to pour ourselves back into you and allow you to pour into us. Lord, we give ourselves back to you. Use us as you please. Motivate us. Make us diligent. Father God, bless us to be persistent. Bless us to be consistent. That you will get the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others who are looking for a church home, in between church homes, but don't have a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church. If you would, inbox me and let me know, number one, that you receive Christ as your personal Savior. Number two, that you have repented of your sins. And number three, that, that you would like to make New Beginning Church your home. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for being here with us. On tonight, we are praying for Lorraine Orr, my mother-in-law, Sister Davis' mother. We are praying for Sister Lorraine Orr as well as all the others that we have mentioned on Sunday, we're lifting them in prayer. We're still praying for Cassidy, Cassidy the little baby, Cassidy Rathman. We're praying for, for her. We're asking you to continue to lift these in the midst of their sickness, lift them before the Lord. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for these, your words. We thank you for blessing us. We come now lifting up. Sister Lori Noah, we ask you to touch and heal her body. We ask you, Father God, to manifest yourself through her. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to give her good reports. We ask you to calm every nerve. We ask you, Father God, to put every blood vessel in place. We pray, Father God, that you heal as only you can. Now we pray for chastity, Father. We ask you to continue to bless her, heal her, bless her to be about her. Your will. Bless her to be a living testimony for young people to see. Heal her, Father God, that she will be one of your greatest missionaries that will tell of the goodness of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. We'll continue to be praying for those of us who are fasting. Uh, we have, what, another few days ahead. And then do not pig out. Uh, Monday morning, you can actually break the fast. Break first, break fast, break the fast. Monday morning, Monday morning, Monday morning. This Monday morning, we're going to break the fast and we're going to gently ease back into it. Hopefully, during this time, you have created a new lifestyle. In 21 days, they say in 21 days, it will become a part of you. And if you've been faithful to the fasting period, you've created a different lifestyle where when you feel better, you have communion with God. And remember what Jesus says, this kind comes but by prayer and fasting. And uh, I don't know about you, but I got some this kinds. <laughs> I got some this kind. You may have one this kind. You may have one this kind. You may have this kind. I got these kinds. I got these kinds. So we want to continue in prayer and fasting and lifting our, our request before the Lord, and we want to walk more dearly with the Lord. We want the Lord to draw near, and the Bible says, if we draw near to God, God will draw near to us. Jesus says that, yeah, the world offers you tribulation, but be of good cheer. Yeah. I've overcome the world. Yeah. Jesus says, put God first, yeah. and I guarantee you, he will put you first. He says that these other things will be added unto you. Amen. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. You can give by three ways. You can walk down the aisle and bring your money forth right now. 
or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail in your offering, your tithes, your contributions to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. We want to continue to lift these in prayer that God will continue to, to bless us. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that we can ask anything that we can seek you, Father God, and we can knock and you will open the door. Bless us in our seeking, bless us in our asking, bless us in our knocking, that we will always look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank you for the New Beginning Church. We ask you to bless us to continue to be a beacon light in a cold, dark, and dismal world. Bless us as we come to a close to our fasting and prayer period our corporate prayer and fasting. Bless us, Father God, that individuals are changed. Our livelihoods are different. That people are made over. Lord, we ask you to bless somebody who is dealing with this kind. We ask you to touch as only you can. We ask you to bless as only you can. We ask you to instruct and direct as only you can. Father God, we ask you to give us wisdom. And bless us to be about your business. Lord, we pray for our choirs. They come to sing unto you. Bless them and remind them that this is not rehearsal. That this is serious business where we give you the glory. And we honor you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Thank you for joining.